Maths. Hello, lovely people. We are doing today's session specifically on past paper problems of these 3D trigonometry. I find that the biggest issue with the 3D trigonometry, the textbook, if you've done the exercises in the textbook, is not exactly what the IEB asks. Um, if you do go through government papers, your DBE papers, you'll see your DBE papers look a lot like the textbook. But the IEB seems to have a completely different way of asking it. They generally go and they ask it in such a way that it's more practical. So especially if you struggled with all of those um, values, you know, the K values and the theta values and the alpha values. So if you had to prove that AC is equal to K sine theta over all of that stuff. Um, I've managed to only find one of those examples in the past IB paper. So the good news at least is those ones aren't the ones you're going to be asked in general. They're not. Okay. So if you did do the homework, great. Just in case, because like I said, the IB has asked one of those in, in um, previous years. So it's possible that they could ask it, but that's not their focus. And this is why I wanted to do today's online lesson to show you exactly what the focus is going to be. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the questions are easier per se, um, but I think at least with a little bit less algebra, so with a little bit less of K and theta and alpha, you guys are generally more comfortable with trigonometry. So that might actually at least put you in a better headspace to do these ones. So the quiz on Monday as well, I'm not going to do any of those prove that A, B is equal to K times sine alpha, I'm not going to do those ones. I'm going to do something much more similar to this worksheet. So this is why this worksheet is so important today. Okay, so when you have a question, when you get stuck, just unmute your mic and just go, ma'am, and then I'll stop and you can ask your question and we can talk about it. Okay, so this lesson is specifically for you guys. So for now, mute your mics. And then, I don't know if you know, but if you mute your mic, if you press the space bar, then you temporarily unmute yourself which is actually a nice way to just press the space bar, ask your question, and then let go of the space bar, and then you're muted again. Then you don't have to worry, am I muted or not? So that one actually works quite nicely. Okay, right. Here we go. First question. This one is from last year's um, end of year paper, so the November 2019 paper. And it says, a metal frame is built to help provide some shade to a triangular piece of land a, B, C. So they've got this metal frame built. A, B, and C, so they, A, B, and C, are on the same horizontal plane, and then they give you the lengths, saying A, C is 7 meters, C, B is 8 meters, and A, B is 10 meters. A, F, B, G, and C, H are vertical metal poles. So that means this is a vertical pole to the horizontal plane, which means these are all 90 degree angles. You have to remember when they talk about vertical to the horizontal, it means even though it's not indicated, this is all 90 degrees, that's 90 degrees, that's 90 degrees, because vertical and horizontal are always at a 90 degree angle. So please remember that. Then it also gives you the fact that AF is equal to BG, which is three meters, and CH is equal to two meters. Now right there, right there with that two meters, that's where the problem comes in. So when you read the question just now, please remember, these two are three meters, but that one is two meters. Now they say they then complete this metal frame. Calculate the area of triangle FGH. So they're going to put canvas over here in that triangle. They're going to put canvas over here, and that's going to provide shade to that triangular piece of land. And that's what you're trying to calculate. Okay. So if you draw the picture, and I've spoken to you guys in the videos, redrawing the pictures are actually a really good idea of getting a good idea of what you want to do. So this right there is the triangle at the bottom. So in that triangle at the bottom, I have all the information that I need. But I'm not trying to work out the area of the triangle at the bottom. I'm trying to work out the area of the triangle at the top. And they've stuffed you over. And the reason they've stuffed you over is this. If this were three meters, that were three meters, and that were three meters, this would have been a prism. And in a prism, the bottom triangle is congruent to the top triangle. But because this has got a different length, this is no longer a prism. It's um, almost like a triangular prism that the top is slightly slanted, if you can think about it. So that top is slightly slanted, which means you have a differently shaped triangle at the top than you have at the bottom. How many of you guys actually thought, oh, that's easy, the top and the bottom triangle are the same? How many of you actually thought that? Uh, I, me. Yeah, I know. There were a lot of, yeah, there were a lot of people that thought that. 
And then the problem is they just worked out the area of the bottom and they went the area of the bottom is the area of the top. And then unfortunately, I think this question counted eight marks. And I think if you only worked out the area of the bottom, I think you could get a maximum of three or four out of the eight only. I think it was only three out of the eight maximum. So this is why you have to be very careful to make sure you have all the information. Don't just jump straight into the diagram and think, oh, this is easy and go for it. Read every single little bit of information. Okay. So because these two triangles are not congruent, we then have to go and we have to almost go, um, you have to almost imagine you are walking around this metal frame. So if you have a good imagination, you want to imagine like your little person standing over here, and you're now looking at this metal frame. So you're looking at this part and you're looking at this part. Now, if I look at this part and I redraw it, hopefully you guys will notice it's in fact a trapezium. That's what I'm getting. Where this is my eight meters, this is my two meters, and this is my three meters. Okay, so that's a trapezium. And then if you go and you look towards this side, so if you only look that way, you'll also have a trapezium. Let's just put the letters in there. That's C, that's H, that's G, and that's B. And they'll have a trapezium going this way. And that trapezium will be C, A, and F. And this is H, and this will be two meters, and this will be three meters, and this will be seven meters. Okay, so the moment you've redrawn this, then what you have is you actually have a much better idea of how to calculate this. And the reason you have a much better idea of how to calculate it is the following. In order to get the area of this top triangle, this one, I know for a fact FG over here is equal to 10 meters. And the reason FG is equal to 10 meters is because this, because of the three meters, three meters, that line is going to be exactly the same length of that line. So at least FG, I don't have to worry about the length because FG is going to be equal to that 10 meters. But I have to now go and calculate FH and I have to calculate HG so I can work out the area of that particular triangle. So construction. Draw the diagrams, construction. I cannot state how important this is. Really, really, really can't. So obviously, if this is eight meters, this is eight meters. And if this is two meters and this is three meters, this one's going to be equal to what? Pretty obvious. This is the easiest question I'm going to ask. One meter. There you go. Thank you. Is that you, Bonga? No, that's oh, no. not you, man. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so for this one, I can then use Pythagoras. And by the way, never be shy to use Pythagoras in these trig measurement diagrams, because a lot of the time you get stuck and you go like, I can't figure out the trig. And that's because it's not really the trigonometry, it's Pythagoras. So you can then go over here and you can say that HG squared is then equal to eight squared plus one squared. So this is going to be 64 plus one, which is 65. And I'm going to leave that in third form because please remember when you're doing a sum like this, you're only allowed to round off once and you're only allowed to round off at the very end. If you round off here, round off here, and then you use the rounded off version, it's becoming less and less and less correct. So especially if you're not allowed to round off only until the very end, use the third once. Why? Because it's easier to write and it retains all of the information. And it's perfectly fine to leave stuff in simpler third form because it's more accurate than rounding it off to one or two decimal places. Then same thing here. There's my 90 degree triangle. There's my two meters. There's my three meters. So this is one meter again. That's seven meters. This is seven meters. So I can then go and work on FH. So FH squared is then equal to one squared plus seven squared. And that's Pythagoras again, so that's 1 plus 49 is 50. So FH is equal to the square root of 50. By the way, if you do type in the square root of 50 on your calculator, it's going to give you 5 times square root 2. Um, let's just see if this one simplifies. That's just square root of 65, so we keep it like that. So now we can go back to this particular triangle. Now we know this is 10 meters. We've worked out HG, which is the square root of 65. 
we've worked out FH, which is 5 squared 2. And now we have all the information we need to work out the area over there. Now, can anybody tell me, when you use the area rule, what do you generally need in order for the area rule to work? Come on. Give me that difficult. I did and do revision. The high. <laughs> I need the I need stuff. Thank you. I need an included angle and two sides. Because remember, the area rule says the area of triangle ABC, for instance, is going to be equal to half AB sine C. So I need two sides and an included angle. So currently, I've got three sides. And because I don't have an angle, I first have to work out an angle. Which rule do we use to work out an angle if I have three sides? Sine rule? Sine rule? No. Cos rule. Cosine rule. If you look at the notes I did in the summary, you'll see in that notes on the summary, it very clearly states there that um, the, if you have three sides, you have to use the cosine rule. So with three sides, you have to use the cosine rule. You can't use the sine rule unless you have at least one angle because the cosine rule is used with two sides and an excluded angle or two angles and an excluded side. So you need at least one angle for the sine rule to work. If there's three sides, it's got to be the cosine rule. Now, this really doesn't matter which of those three um, angles you want to work out. Which one do you want, guys want to go for? Do you want to work out angle H, F, or G? F. We'll go for angle F. So we're going to say the cos of angle F over here is going to be equal to, now this obviously is not on your formula sheet, but you go and you take the two sides that include the angle and you square it. So you say it's that side square, which if you think about it, it's just going to be 50 over here. So it's going to be that squared, which is 50, plus this side squared, which is then 10 squared, minus that side, the opposite side squared, which is just going to be the 65. Over then, 2, and now be careful, it's not the side squared. So it's not FH squared and that one squared. It's 2 times just FH, so it's 5 squared 2, times just that 10. And I did show you how to deduce this particular formula from your cosine rule. If you don't know how to deduce this particular formula or you haven't memorized, you can just write out the normal cosine rule. Okay. So that means angle F, and I'm going to be super lazy. I'm just going to type it straight into that inverse cos. So I'm going to go straight into saying it's shift cos minus 1 of all of that. So I'm going to go to 50 plus 10 squared minus 65 over 2 times 5 squared 2 times 10. And that's going to give me an angle of 53,055 dot, dot, dot. Again, don't round off yet because I'm not at the very end. I'm only allowed to round off when I will get to the very end. So now I can use the area rule because I've got those two sides and I've got the included angle. So I can say the area of the triangle, so this is FGH, is equal to half side times side. And please remember, it's got to be side times side and then the sine of the included angle. So it's got to be 5 squared 2 times 10 times then the sine of that included angle, which is that angle F. Now, luckily, I've still got it stuck on my computer screen. By the way, if you're worried you're going to lose this, you can do that shift store under A, and then you've got that full answer stored under A or any of those ones. If you don't want to round off, just keep the full version over there. Okay. So now I can go to that one, and I can say it's a half times 5 squared 2 times 10 times the sine of that previous angle, which I stored under A. So I can just go alpha A. There you go. That means then that the area is equal to 28, comma, and normally they say to one decimal place, but just read it carefully. I think here they said, they just said calculate the area. And normally at the beginning of every IB paper, they say, unless otherwise stated, round off to one decimal place. So that's going to be 28, comma, 3 meters squared. Okay, so initially, if you looked at it, you might have thought, oh, this is super easy, and you might have just worked out this one, which, by the way, if you had worked out the area of that one, 
you would have used the exact same process as working out the area of that one. And that's why they said you could only get like three out of eight, because at least you could show here that you can do this part. But because you made it a lot easier and a lot shorter on yourself, and also because it's wrong, I think that only gave, I'll have to check with Mrs. Schofield. He marked this paper last year, and uh, Mrs. Somia and I do also marked it, so I'll have to check with them. But I think they only gave like three or four out of eight for this question if you didn't first calculate this. So the importance of drawing the diagram, very important. Draw the diagram, not just for yourself, but also for the examiner. So the examiner can see what you were thinking and what you were doing. Okay, any questions on this one? No. Going, going, gone. No, right. So here's the next question. The next question comes from the IB, paper 2 of November 2017. So this was the 2017 end of year exam. And it says there, in the diagram below, three equal circles. So equal circles mean they fit exactly on top of each other. I want to apologize. Um, for some reason, my document camera um, whenever there's a perfect circle drawn, it makes it look more like an ellipse or an oval. Um, I was noticing that because you guys are doing analytical geometry next week and I was doing your notes and your videos. Um, so you'll see in one of the videos, I actually apologize for the fact that the circle looks so horrible because to me it looks perfect. And to you guys, I can see it looks kind of like an oval. So apologies, especially to the slightly OCD people. But I promise when you see the notes, when I scan the notes, you'll see it is actually round. Okay, so... In the diagram below, three equal circles, so they're equal, meaning they fit exactly on top of each other. Very important, with a radius of three units. Are positioned so that they touch each other. Now, the word touch each other is very, very important. You'll see just now. BT is a vertical common tangent. So a vertical common tangent just means it cuts through there, and it's a tangent to those two circles. There you go. So a tangent to those two circles. And then you have CD. CD is a, co is a common tangent to those two circles. So those two circles right there. And they wanted you to show that the length of BT is equal to 3 squared 3 plus 6. Now, in order to do this one, again, I have mentioned it to my class, and I'm sure Mr. Rees Mesa and Mrs. Schofield has mentioned it to their classes. Construction, construction, construction. If you are too scared to draw on the diagram, to mess with the diagram, to redraw the diagram, you're not going to see what you're supposed to see. You're really, really not. So the first thing we need to see is this right there. We'll say it's the center of angle of this circle. Sorry. This right there is the center of this circle. And this right there is the center of this circle. Now, the year this paper came out, they had a huge complaint about the fact that they said most learners wouldn't know that this is going to be the diameter of that common tangent. They said, how are the students supposed to know that this is the diameter? Now, hopefully you guys can see it's the diameter. There is a theorem in mathematics that states, if you um, position three exact circles, so three exact circles like that, or even if only the bottom two are equal, the top doesn't have to be equal, but even if the bottom two are equal and you draw a common tangent going up, then this will always be the diameter of that top circle. Um, so yeah, there was huge complaints saying, but nobody knew that theorem, so how were they supposed to know? And the examiner went like, well, they were supposed to see, which is really hilarious, because we keep on telling you guys, don't just believe what you see, you have to prove it. Anyway, let's not get into that conversation. Now, if I connect these centers of the circle, Right. What can you tell me if I say that all of these circles have a radius of three units? What can you tell me about the length of that line right there? It's equal to uh, six units. Six. Six. Yeah. Three, 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 three. Absolutely agree. So the moment you've got all of those threes, you've got an Equila not yeah, an equilateral triangle. It's an equilateral triangle, which means all of these angles, that's 60, that's 60, that's 60. Pretty easy and straightforward. Now, the reason this is important is the following. We want to work out the length from B to T. We know this part right there, from there to there, is also 3, because that's also the radius of the circle. We know this part right here, there, is also equal to 3. 
And the reason this is equal to 3 is just because if you draw a 90 degrees down there and 90 degrees down there, that's the radius, that's the radius, which means this is also 3. So by just drawing it, you realize this is 3, this is 3. So all I really need to work out is I need to work out this little line over there. And by the way, now you can go and you can say, we've got B, we've got C, we've got D, so let's call this A. Um, let's call this E, and let's call this F. And hopefully you should notice this right there is going to be 90 degrees. And the reason this is going to be 90 degrees is because that is a tangent to this. And please remember, what do I know about tangents and radii? This is from Euclidean geometry. What do we know about tangents and radii in a circle? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So I'm not even making this up. I'm not putting a 90 degree where there shouldn't be a 90 degree. This is very much because of the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. And then again, look at it. It's again Pythagoras. I cannot stress enough how important Pythagoras are, is in this I, in these IB questions. They love popping up these, these Pythagoras questions just when you least expect it. So I can then work out the length of AE and say AE squared is then equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 3 plus 3, so it's 6 squared, minus then this line, which is the 3 squared. And there's your Pythagoras again. So this one's going to be 64 minus 9, which I think is 55. Yep, yeah, 55. So A, E is then equal, um, yep. Yeah. Is it not 36? Oh, I'm so happy you're away. This is why I need you guys. I so yeah. desperately need you guys when I'm having a bad math day. Thank you. I thought I wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, my class at least knows I do this. I, I, I will do the most complicated stuff absolutely fine, and then something like six squared, I mess it up. Thank you. That was the, was that you, Michelle? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so thirty-six yeah. minus nine. That's going to be twenty-seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's much better. So the square root of twenty-seven is then going to be equal to. Very three. Mm -hmm. which is 3 squared 3, which, by the way, you'll notice I didn't look at this at all. Um, I'm mentioning it more and more in the videos, um, especially in paper 2 work, where I keep on telling you guys, please remember, when you read the word show or prove in a paper 2 question, um, you're not allowed to use what you're trying to show. Oh, by the way, it also counts for paper 1. I also mentioned this, like, for instance, in paper 1, they'll say, show that the equation of the cubic graph is this. You're not allowed to use that until the very end when you check your answer. You have, you're allowed to use all of the other information, but the, what you're trying to show or what you're trying to prove is pretty much just there to check your answer. So that's why I just went and I said, oh, I have to work out the length of BT. I ignore the rest. I don't even look at that until I'm done. So, But I like that 3 squared 3 because you can see there. And then I've got AE. But that means BT then is going to be equal to 3 plus that 3 squared 3 that we just worked out plus that 3. Which, da -da, that is 3 squared 3 plus 6. And that's only now that I look at the answer to go and check the answer and go, okay, I've got it right. Okay. So, like I said, pretty difficult um, just because a lot of the stuff you might not have known. You might not have known the fact that um, if I draw a common tangent to two equal circles, it will always go through the center of that circle. Um, and the reason it goes through the center of that circle, if you think about it logically, is if these circles are equal, whatever circle I put there at the top will rest in the middle. And because it will rest in the middle, this tangent will always go through the center of the circle. So this will always be the diameter. But that's only if the bottom two are equal. Okay, the top one doesn't have to be equal, but the bottom two must be equal for it to go through that. And then also remembering from last year, your Euclidean geometry, that these lines, radius is perpendicular to tangent. Radius is perpendicular to tangent. And there, especially, radius is perpendicular to tangent. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spotted the Pythagoras. Okay, so there was lots of stuff going on there. Now, this was the interesting thing about this question. That was A of question 12. Now, if you page over, same paper, 
They then go and they give you question B. Now, in question B, they say, three identically sized cylinders are stacked on top of each other, as shown in the diagram below. So now they have cylinders, okay? And they stack the three identical, by the way, identically sized cylinders, and they stack them on top of each other. They are anchored down by a piece of rope from A to B. So there's a piece of rope going from the top of the cylinder B down there to point A. And another piece of rope from B to E. So there's another piece of rope going down from B to E. A, C, D, and E lie on the same horizontal plane. So A, C, D, and E. So you can actually go if you want to, and you can just go and draw in there. And I did show you guys in the examples that we did. I know this is not very well drawn. To highlight this because that tells you this is the horizontal plane. Just so you don't get confused. Because especially with these 3D diagrams, it's nice to know this is the horizontal plane. So everything there is on the horizontal plane. Then they also go and they say, B, C, and D lie on the same vertical plane. So B, C, and D, those lie on the same vertical plane. So that means this is at 90 degrees to the horizontal. And that's something you need to know. Horizontal and vertical are always at 90 degrees. Then it says B is the highest point of the cylinder, right there. The angle of elevation from A to B, so if you look up from A to B, the angle of elevation is going to be 50 degrees. So this is 50 degrees. That's your angle of elevation. Um, and then angle BEA is 70 degrees. So from B to E to A, now careful, this BEA is not in a vertical triangle or in a horizontal triangle. This is a slanted triangle. So this triangle goes slanted over from this horizontal and to touch there at the top into the vertical. So careful, this one is not at 90 degrees. That's a slanted triangle lying over, going from the horizontal into the vertical up there at B. And then they say the following, this right there. I cannot stress how important this is. The radius of each of these cylinders is three meters. So what should you know immediately? They talk about three identical cylinders. They talk about the radius is each equal to three meters. So what should you know? Can somebody hear that the alarm bells going off in your head? Anyone? Love it, it's like deadly silent. Come on, people. <laughs> I don't think I am it's alarm bells. Bell. Circle B or not. This, people, is the front view of this. Oh. So if you are standing over here looking at this and you look at it straight on, it's three identical circles stack on top of each other with a three meter radius. Therefore, you've already got information here about them. And this is what was so annoying about this paper. Normally, they would go and say question 12, and they will say this. They wouldn't make it A and B. They would go and put all this information in. They'd make this A. They'd make this B to tell you that you're still looking at the same information. But they specifically tried to trick people so people would not realize, but you already have a bunch of the information worked out. You already have all of this. So what you've already worked out, so you've already got from here, there, if I draw a line going down there, this thing is point T. And they were even nice to tell you the top is point B. So you've got point B at the top there. There, right there, was point T. And you really know that that BT is equal to that, put it in there, 3 square root 3 plus 6. So I actually already have the length of that line BT worked out from A. Okay, so yes, this was a pretty horrible question. Now, the first thing they ask here is they ask, calculate the length of AB. So the rope, if I anchor there from the top of B down to A, what's the length of AB, that rope that has been used to anchor it down? And then they also say, um, Number two, if the second rope EB has a length of 13 meters, so if you have that second rope there having a length of 13 meters, so we'll just write that in there. So that second rope there has got a length of 13 meters. 
then determine the straight line distance between E and A. Right, so first things first. If you think about it, then you can go and you can say, I can draw a triangle in here. And that's actually why they gave me this line over here. They were even nice, because I don't know if you realize, when I draw this line from D to A, you saw that it didn't match that little dotted line. But the moment I put point T down and I draw it in, it actually matches the dotted line. So this is 90 degrees, and the reason this is 90 degrees is because BT is vertical, TA is in the horizontal plane, and there's always a 90 degree angle between the horizontal and the vertical. So I can actually draw a triangle there, which is triangle B to T to A. So number one here. Here's B, there's T, and there's A. This thing is your angle of elevation from A to B, which is 50 degrees. This thing was already worked out from A. That's the 3 square root 3 plus 6. And then I can go and I can work out the length of rope AB. So this is what I want to calculate. And I can work it out. Yes, you can use the sign rule if you want. I know there are a couple of people that don't like using the trig definitions. You know, the so car toa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. There's some people that don't like using that, so they just use the sine rule. It's fine if you use the sine rule. I'm not going to do that because it's a 90 degree triangle. I'm going to use the trig definitions. And please remember trig definitions only in 90 degree triangles. So I write at the top there in triangle ABT. And by the way, people, I did speak to you guys in the videos about doing this. The moment you start working in a triangle, show the examiner. It's not just for the examiner, but it's also for you. Show in which triangle you're working and even redraw the triangle so you've got a better idea of what you're doing because it's very difficult to work with a 3D diagram. But if you try to draw the 2D triangle that you're going to work in, because that's effectively, like, effectively what you're doing in 3D trick, is you're working in a 2D part of a 3D diagram. You never work in the whole thing at the same time. So you're going to go and say, I, w I have opposite and hypotenuse, so that's sine of 50 degrees is then my opposite, which is 3, square root 3 plus 6, over my hypotenuse, which is AB. So I'm going to multiply both sides by AB, which means AB times the sine of 50 is then 3, square root 3 plus 6, and then finally, a, B is going to be equal to that 3 square 3 plus 6 divided by the sine of 50. But like I said, you could have used your sine rule here as well. So if I type this into my calculator, that's going to give me 14,6. And they didn't say anything about rounding, so you're just going to stick to the normal one decimal place. Now, by the way, and I have had this discussion with my class as well, if you go and you round off in your final answer, then in the next question, you are allowed to use the rounded off version. You're perfectly allowed. So if you've got AB is equal to 14,6 and you want to use um, AB in the next question, you are allowed to use that 14,6. But you're also allowed to use the full version. It just depends on you. Obviously, the full version is more accurate. But if you want to use the full version, you have to shift, store it under A so that you can use the full version. The memo normally allows for both. So if you're happy just using the 14,6, we're actually going to use the 14,6 in the next question. So let's look at the next question. The next one then says, if the second rope EB has a length of 13 meters, so this is a length of 13 meters, and I've just calculated that this one has got a length of 14,6. Please now go and calculate the straight line distance between E and A. And what you've got there, please remember you've got that 70 degrees as well. So this is why, again, people, redraw the diagram. If you are too lazy to redraw the diagram, this work is going to be the most horrible work you do this year. Okay? Trust me, it will be. So this is the top B. This is E in the horizontal plane. That's A in the horizontal plane. There's no 90 degrees. Why? Because this is not a perfectly, it's not a vertical on the 
horizontal. It's a slanted triangle. It's kind of, it fell over, if that makes any sense. This triangle kind of fell over, it's lying skew. But I do know this is 70 degrees. They've given me the fact that this is 13 meters. I've just calculated the fact that this is 14,6 meters. I want to now go and get that. So I've got two sides and an excluded angle. Can anybody tell me which trick rule works with two sides and an excluded angle? Very well, in fact. Going, going. Nobody? Cosine. No, sine. Sorry. <laughs> you need to go through those, those notes of mine. Um, people, in the notes, I've specified very clearly which rule goes with which. I've said, if you have two sides and an excluded angle, that's always going to be the sine rule. Two sides and an included angle is always going to be the cosine rule. It's very useful to memorize that because instead of going um and ah wondering what you're going to use, I can just go and say two sides, excluded angle, sine rule done. I can only use the sine rule there. I can't use the cosine rule. Now, I will have to go and first, with two sides and an excluded angle, I need to work out an angle. So I first need to work out an angle before I can work out the side. And that angle needs to be this first. I first need to work out angle B before I can work out side B or side EA. So we say the sine of angle B. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I first have to work out angle A. I want angle B, but I first need to work out angle A. Apologies. Because with the information I have, I can only first work out angle A. So the sine of angle A, ooh, almost forgot. In triangle ABB. -E. Yes, people, write it. Even though you've drawn the triangle, just write it. It's just such a good habit. And it's going to make the examiner, when they mark your paper at the end of the year, just go like, oh, that's nice and neat. And they're going to smile and think better of you, which means... They're nice and then normally they're nicer when they give marks. Trust me, people, be nice to the examiners. Okay, so sine of angle A over the opposite side, which is 13, is then equal to the sine of 70 degrees over the opposite side, which is 14,6. That means the sine of angle A is then equal to 13 times sine of 70 divided by 14,6. And then I can find that A by just using the inverse sine, and I can type it in exactly like that. I can say shift sine minus 1 of that 13 sine 70 over 14.6. So I'm using the rounded or version, which is fine. As long as this was part 1 and this is part 2, you're allowed to use the rounded or version. You're never allowed to use the rounded or version, though, um, if you're still busy with the same sum, then you have to use the accurate version. So that means this is going to be 56,79 dot, dot, dot degrees. Again, note, I haven't rounded it off. Why? Because I'm not done. Okay, only allowed to round off at the end. I can keep on repeating it again and again and again, but please don't be lazy and lose marks otherwise. Okay, then I want to work out EA. Now to work out EA, obviously we need angle B. And to get B, we're going to use sum of angles of a triangle. Never forget your Euclidean geometry inside your trigonometry. So when you're working with triangles, please remember sum of angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees, exterior angles of a triangle, isosceles triangle, equilateral triangle, any of that information that you have from Euclidean geometry, you have to use it here. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck because you don't have something that, that you do have but that's because you're not spotting the Euclidean geometry. Look at the Euclidean geometry. Okay, so I can then go and say angle B is then equal to 180 degrees minus 70 degrees minus that 56 comma blah, blah, blah. And that's going to be sum of angles of a triangle. So 180 minus that previous answer minus the 70. So that's going to be equal to 53,205, blah, blah, blah. Again, don't round off yet. Now, finally, we can get EA. So EA over the sine of B, which is that 53,
is then going to be equal to, and it really doesn't matter, I'm just going to use this one. So I'm going to say it's going to be equal to 14,6 over the sine of 70. So this is then going to be 14,6 times the sine of that 53,205. Sorry, ma'am, do you mean EA? Yep, EA. Oh, thanks. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I'm so incredibly happy. No, I'm not. Although, it's been almost three quarters of an hour, and I've only made two mistakes, so it's an average day for me. It's not necessarily a bad day. A good day would have been no mistakes. That would have been a good day. Anyway, 14.6 times the sine of that 53,205, dot, dot, dot. Don't round off yet. All right, well, we'll round off just now when we get to that final answer, sine of 70 degrees. So I can then go and I can use this. You can store it in your memory if you want. You can go shift, store under A, then you have it. Or you can just use the answer function. It's up to you. So it's going to be 14.6 sine of alpha A, or the answer, over the sine of 70. And that's going to give me, and now you can round off, 12,4. So, yeah. Um, now you understand what I'm meant with. They don't like asking the questions with all those variables that you did in the homework. But the questions they ask aren't necessarily easy. There's a lot of thinking that goes into it and a lot of construction, as you guys can see. Um, so this is why you need to go through, through all of these things. Obviously, we don't have time today to go through all of these examples, which is good, because that means maybe over the weekend you can go over one or two of the examples. I will, of course, finish the memo and I'll post it before the end of the day. So you will have the memo before the quiz on Monday. That's not going to be an issue. But let's see how far we can get on some more of these sums. Wait, ma'am. Yes. You know the storing in A thing? Mine yes. doesn't work. Are you sure? Yeah. OK. So just press something in your calculator. Go 15.2 equals. Uh-huh. Then go shift. Yeah. And then you press that RCL button. Yeah. And then you press any of the buttons. But you don't press alpha. You just press any of these buttons. So I just press this one, and then it tells me the answer has been stored in A. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Mind I think you were pressing right. alpha A instead of just pressing the button. I think that might have been what you were doing. Yeah. Fine. OK, cool. Right, here's another one. Now, this is one of the IB ones that I managed to find that does have the theta and the k and stuff like that in there. So this one does have those. Um, it's not really variables per se. It's constant values represented by a letter or whatever. So this is the only one I found that's kind of strange that asks you, show that BC is equal to that, prove that AD is equal to k. So this is the only one I've managed to find, I think, in the last, uh, must have been about, about the last six or seven years. Okay, so this was in the supplementary paper, the March 2017 one, and it says, at the end of a marathon, there's a semicircular banner. So watch the words, semicircular banner. So this is half a circle. So there is symmetry over there, because I'm going to be using that symmetry just now, and you're going to go like, are you sure? Yes, I can use that symmetry. With the word finish written on it, it stands perpendicular to the horizontal ground. So again, this banner is perpendicular to the horizontal ground. So again, they tell you in the diagram below, B, C, and D is on the horizontal. So I can just shade that so you guys can see there's my horizontal. And please remember this is then perpendicular to that banner. So it kind of comes out. I don't know if you can see this. If this is the horizontal, the banner is standing like this. OK, right. Um, then it says the highest point A, so if this is the highest point, there's symmetry, meaning this is a quarter circle and this is a quarter circle. So if this is a semicircle and this is the highest point, then this is a quarter and a quarter, because I'm going to be using that just now. It's connected to D by a straight rope from A to D. So there's a rope going from A to D. Angle CBD is equal to theta and angle BCD is 
also equal to theta, and then dc and db are both equal to k. So this, people, again, notice the Euclidean geometry. It's an isosceles triangle. It's an isosceles triangle. So because it's an isosceles triangle, there's actually quite a few things that even before I do anything else, I can go and say, what is this angle going to be like? Going to be equal to on that horizontal? Can anybody tell me? What's angle D going to be? 180 minus 2 theta. Absolutely. So from B to D to C on the horizontal, that's going to be 180 degrees minus 2 theta. And that's specifically going to be because of some of the angles of a triangle. So just remember those Euclidean geometry things that's going to be important. Okay. Now it asks you, show that BC is equal to 2K times the cos of theta. So you want to calculate B to C, this one right there. Okay. Now in order to do that, you look at that bottom one and you say, hang on a minute, I pretty much have all the information I need. I've got two sides and I've got three angles. So I can totally use the sine rule in that triangle. So for A, I'm just going to redraw this. That's B, that's C, this is theta, this is theta. We've just determined this is 180 degrees minus 2 theta. This is K, this is K, and I'm going to say in triangle B, C, D. B, C over the sine of D. which is then the sine of 180 minus theta, 2 theta, is then going to be equal to k over the sine of theta. So that means that bc is equal to k times the sine of 180 minus 2 theta. We'll fix that up just now. Over the sine of theta. Now, in the video that I did on these ones, I told you when it asks you show that BC is equal to blah, 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 you almost want to cover this up. You don't want to look at what they want you to prove BC equal to, because otherwise you guys are going to try and reverse engineer the answer. You guys are going to try and say, oh, that's the answer. Let me see how I can get to it. That's not the point. The point is always they ask show that BC. So rather change that question in your head to calculate BC. Now, once you've calculated BC, you compare the two answers, and now you have to go and manipulate to get to that. But this man manipulation, hopefully you can spot, is trick simplification. So I'm going to say first, it's K times, now 180 minus, that's a reduction formula, second quadrant. What do I know about sine in the second quadrant? Come up, cost. Or well, all students um, take coffee. All strippers take cash, positive. That's the one, because where would they put the swiping machine? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> now you've got an online recording of that one. Uh-oh. Okay, so <laughs> um, this is then going to be in the second quadrant. So sine in the second quadrant is positive. So that's going to be the sine of 2 theta using that reduction formula. And then we did do a video this week about the double angle, saying we just expand that double angle, saying it's sine of... 2 sine theta cos theta. Which then means sine theta divides by sine theta. So you've got 2k cos theta. And now you can compare the two and you can go, oh, good, I'm right. So this was actually quite a um, great deal easier than the ones that you did for the examples and for homework. Okay. Right. Now the next question, B says, show that AD, so AD is that line that goes up here at the top, so there's AD, show that AD is equal to K. Now, in order to do that, you guys should hopefully spot the following. AD currently is not part of any triangle in the. So I need to kind of go and I need to create a triangle. Now, you could go and say, let's connect B to A, and then I can work in this triangle. But the problem is, I don't have any angles there. So it's actually easier to draw this triangle.
So if you were standing again, I know I keep on drawing these little men. If you were standing over there looking to this side, then hopefully you would have been able to see the following. You would have been able to see there's the point A, the top of the banner. I don't know if I can get these on the same page, maybe like this. There's point A, which is the top of the banner, right there. This point right there is going to be in the middle. It's going to be in the middle because remember, A is right down to the middle. So on this diagram, I'm going to have to name this point. And by the way, you also have to get used to this um, for your final exam. If you need to create a point that's not there, you need to name it before you can use it. So I'm going to name it right there, and I'm going to say I've got A, B, C, D. Let's name this point E. So that'll be point E, which will be at 90 degrees because that's going to be vertical to the horizontal, and this is going to be D. Okay, and I'm trying to work out what this is specifically. Now, in order to calculate this, you might look at that and you go like, okay, how is this going to help me? There's a couple of reasons why this actually helps you. We've just worked out the length of BC. If I drop this line straight down, what can you tell me about BE and EC? Hopefully. Anyone? Going, going? They're equal. They're equal. Because this is a quarter circle, this is a quarter circle. So this is a radius. This is a radius, effectively. That's a radius. Okay. Then you can go and you can say, okay, so this means because I've got the fact that BC is 2K cos theta, I can just divide it by 2. So this is K times the cos of theta. And this is also going to be K times the cos of theta. These half, half. Then the other thing that you should hopefully spot, hopefully spot, is this is also going to be the radius. Did you spot that? Because mm -hmm. most people, they messed this up completely because they didn't spot that this was the radius. This was also k times the cos of theta. And then you can work out this little line over there because that little line over there, if you think about it, this is going to be at 90 degrees and it's going to be part of this bottom little triangle. So you can actually work out this part. So you can say ED. So you can say in triangle ADE. Well, actually, it's not triangle ADE for now. Apologies. We can't work on this one yet. We first have to work on this bottom one, which is ECD or CDE. So let's do this first. So in triangle ECD, this one we just then said is k times the cos of theta. This we know is theta. This we know is k. So I can work out that little line ED by saying ED. And by the way, because this is 90 degrees, it's even easier. We can say ED is then equal to um, opposite of our hypotenuse, which is sine. Uh, ED over k, sorry. ED over K is equal to the sine of theta. That's better. Or the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's ED over K. So that means ED is then equal to K times the sine of theta. K. So now because I've got ED there, I've got it over here. So that's K times the sine of theta. I've got this one that I've just proven, which is K times the cos of theta, because this was then the radius of that circle. And then I can actually use Pythagoras to work out AD. So I know these two should be swapped around, technically speaking, because I needed to first work out this one. So this was the first part. This was part one. And this was then part two. Sorry about that. This is very messy, I agree. I might at least delete this. Right, so now we can use that 90 degree triangle and we can say in triangle ADE. AD, which is what I want, so AD squared, is then equal to K cos theta squared plus K 
times sine theta squared because of Pythagoras. And then you'll notice this is going to be k squared times cos squared theta plus k squared times sine squared theta. And if you take the k squared out as a common factor, then you've got cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. What is, case, what is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equal to? You guys, it's equal to 1. So cos squared theta plus sine squared theta or sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. So this is k squared times 1, which then means if ad squared is k squared, that means ad is then equal to k. So, ouch. These ones, as you can see, are fairly labor intensive. They're labor intensive. They require you to think completely out of the box. They need you to know your rules very well. We don't um and ah and go, uh, I think it's the cos rule when in fact it's the sine rule. They need you to not just consider your trig measurement rules. They also need you to consider um, your Pythagoras, um, some of the angles of a triangle. In this case, the circle. I mean, if you didn't spot that this right there was a semicircle, so this is a radius, this is a radius, this is a radius, you would never have spotted that k cos theta, k cos theta, k cos theta, and then you would have been lost. So that's why it's so important to think out of the box and consider all of your possible options here. Otherwise, you are going to get stuck. Um, by the way, for the quiz on Monday, I did put some easy stuff in there. There is easy as well as difficult. I had to do both. Um, so especially the first question, hopefully, should just get you guys to calm down and get a nice easy one. The first question, in fact, isn't even 3D. The first question, I'm, I gave you a 2D question just to get you guys started nicely. Because um, in this week's quiz, Mr. Schofield commented, said, I actually gave you the most difficult question first. So I said, okay, fine, I'll give you an easy question first. So you guys can take a look at that one first. Right, so, um, yeah, all the quizzes are for marks. So what's going to happen is they're going to have different weightings. You have to remember they have different weightings because they have different marks. So the um, uh, differential calculus quiz is out of 35, whereas this quiz is only out of 20. So obviously the, the differential calculus quiz counts more than this quiz. And then the one you do after that, the analytical geometry quiz, is again going to be more marks, so it's going to count more. So this one will not count as much as the differential calculus or the analytical geometry. But yeah, they all count together. Together they make one mark, which is your short item mark. Okay. Thank you, man. It's my pleasure. So um, this one you might recognize. I know I put this one. We had to do a Friday afternoon on measurement last year because we ran out of time in grade 11. And I know I put this one on the worksheet, so you might actually recognize this one when you try it again, hopefully. I will put the memo for that one on there. Um, so you can try and then first try on your own and then look at the memo. This one is very interesting. Um, I also put this one in last year's grade 11. This is why I moved them to the back because this will be the second time you see these ones. If, you, if they look familiar, it's because, yes, you did it last year, specifically in that measurement one that we did on that Friday afternoon. And then this one is actually not too bad, if you think carefully. This one's pretty good and straightforward. And then this one, I'm sorry to say, sucks. This one officially sucks. Um, yeah, my matrix from last year, I actually had them cut out this shape. I actually literally had them cut it out and fold it in order to do this question, uh, just because it's a little bit easier then. But anyway, I will put the memo on there for you. If you do it over the weekend and you get stuck, just send me a WhatsApp, send me an email. Um, perhaps we can organize, if there's enough of you, we can organize like over the weekend a group ASP just to go through some of these solutions. But I will have these solutions for you guys on here before the end of the day. Okay. Uh, so, um, Thank you, you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Example. You know the examples. Thank you, ma'am. Okay? Um, they won't be in our test, right? Because those are quite long, and I think the test is like. It's twenty hour. The, okay, the twenty marks. It's twenty marks. Um. So no, they are. <laughs> they are not exactly as long, but um, I have to. Let me just stop the recording here.
I have to mention that even though they are not that long, they are a little bit 